Welcome to another video. What I have here is an Ignite R1600-1D Class D amplifier um, that I purchased for this video. Um, so I, the description here states that this unit is not working for parts only, does not power on, missing screws, power terminal damaged. So let's take a look and see what we got going on here. Um, I already did remove the end plates. It did come in with damaged, broken end plate that I actually had to reassemble, glue back together. And I will have it all finished up before you know it. So the end plates, like I said, have been removed uh, prior to this video. So the first thing I did notice is yes, it does have some damage to it. So if we take a peek here at the terminal, it is damaged, melted, missing screws, um, which luckily I carry these terminals. So we'll flip it over here and what we'll do is we will proceed to find the issue of no power which I already found the problem too which is the power terminal well, I'll try to get it, get it on camera there for you. The power terminal has physically got so hot that it desoldered itself from the board. So we'll have to remove the board from the heat sink, uh, take out the old melted terminal, and reinstall a new terminal. I will be right back with you. Okay, so I have removed all the screws from the board. Uh, the end plates, those screws that held the end plates on is what actually held the ends of the board onto the heat sink. Um, let me just remove the thermistor here. Just slide it back from the screw. I do have to admit the build quality on this isn't too bad for being a name that I really have never heard of. It's not too bad at all. I just, just to point out, they use really thick screws on the uh, heat sink spreaders. The metal's a little thin here, but it is bent quite tall, so it shouldn't warp too bad. Um, the power supply uses 80 no8s uh, the outputs are the standard IRF 640n yeah just the IR f 640n's and the uh, voltage regulators here so here's your 7815 and your 79 it should be a 7915. Um, this does use a single 2184 uh, Class D driver. Um, I see here, which you can find uh, through Mauser still. Um, I did notice the power supply capacitors are slightly bulged on the top, so I will be in. I will. I will be inspecting those capacitors uh, for any damage or out of tolerance specifications. So let's just get this board right on out of the heat sink here. Make sure the micas stay with the heat sink. And we will move on with the board repair. So here's the underside. 
Sorry for the lighting and glare. I'm still working on perfecting these issues. So any good ideas? Please let me know. I am not a cameraman um, at all. So I am doing my best here with the limited knowledge that I have of video production. So we have the power terminal here as you can see that got so hot the solder actually melted and the terminal fell out so I will pull that terminal out and we'll put a new one in all right so I have returned and finished the replacement of the uh, terminal so, um, as you can see, I, oh, sorry about this lighting once again. Uh, as you can see, the the power ground terminal block has been replaced. I got a new one soldered in place there. Um, it looks good on the other side of the board here. So, I also did replace the screws in the speaker output terminals. Otherwise, I think this board is good to go again. I'm really not sure if uh, it's well understood of how or why these terminal blocks actually start melting. So what happens is when you have a bad connection on the power and ground terminal block, uh, depending on the kind of wire you're using, the size of the wire, the type of terminal you're using, how you terminated it, determines the resistance value between the wire that you're using and the terminal block. So what happens is if you have bad connection or too small of a gauge of wire or too small of a terminal, the temperature starts to increase at that termination point. It increases to a point where it gets hot enough to melt the terminal and gets hot enough to melt the solder on this board. I also wanted to point out, I think the solder that was used on this is leaded solder. It had a quite low melting point uh, real close to the 6040 that I use so it seemed like the solder that was used was a leaded lead based solder I'm not quite sure uh, but it sure seemed like that when I replaced the terminal so what I will do is I will hook up power and we will check the drive on this all right, so I have hooked up my 12 volts. Um, again, this is 12 volts, two amp, limited, isolated power supply that I use through a foot switch. Foot switch is connected to the green wire here to the remote terminal. And I have to ground the scope. Give me two seconds here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna locate a good grounding point on the board itself which I'm going to go ahead and go right to the ground terminal into the board. Uh, let's see here, we're gonna have the scope set up on the top left hand corner. We're gonna have the scope set up top left hand corner and the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to check the drive signal on this. on this Ignite R1600.1D. Verify that I know where my power protect light is. There it is, it's by the speaker terminal. I will turn all my potentiometers fully counterclockwise in case there is any issues on the output of this amplifier for your gain. Oh, that gain was all the way up too. I can probably see how it got a little warm. Uh, I turn the gains down just to reduce the potentials of uh, any errors on the output. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pulse 
the power supply while watching the drive on the oscilloscope. And what you're going to notice is the signal on the power supply. So we're looking good there, so we're getting good power supply drive on both sides of that transformer. And we're going to check the pulse of, there it is. The 2184 Class D drive IC. As you can see, it is present. And the other side is going to be a uh, re reference to negative rail. And as you can see, there's your negative side. So this amplifier is up and running, fully functional. Uh, just had to replace the power and ground terminal block. Um, just had to replace the power and ground terminal block. And um, inspected the rest of the circuit. Uh, the class D, the 2184IC is working as intended. Outputs are functioning. Uh, oscillation, rail to rail, and then oscillation uh, reference to negative rail. Uh, let's otherwise what I will do next is check my voltage for my preamp let me just check my so we have our 14.4 on the negative side and we have our, there it is, 15 on the positive side. So our voltage regulation is good. Um, so that will conclude the test, the functionality test of this board. All seems well, all seems good, all seems functional. Uh, the last thing I will do off camera is I'm just gonna verify the capacitor because it does, like I said, it looks like a little bit of a bulge going on the top here, probably from when the negative terminal was separating from the PCB. Um, otherwise, that concludes this board. Again, I do thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you are interested in amplifier repair content. Uh, I will be out again soon with the next one.